the right philosophy. Now, let me give you a couple of philosophies to consider. Here's the first one. It's called the philosophy of the poor. And here it is. Poor people usually spend their money and invest what's left. That's the philosophy of the poor. Now, here's the philosophy of the rich. Rich people invest their money and spend what's left. And here's the startling answer. It really doesn't matter what the amount is. What's most important is not the amount. What's really important is the philosophy. So I would ask you to adopt this philosophy of spending after you have invested. Invest first, then spend. And I've got a little formula that I'm going to share with you. Now, what should a child do with a dollar? I mean, there's a lot of debate going on, I'm sure, across the country on what a child should do with a dollar. Here's one opinion. It's only a child and it's only a dollar. What difference does it make? Well, in my opinion, it makes all the difference in the world. A person's economic future starts with a child with a dollar. Somebody says, oh, no, you're only young once. Let him spend it all. Well, when would you hope that would stop? Somebody says, well, wait till he's 50 and broke like me and, you know, and then he'll learn. Well, no, we don't want to wait that long. If I would have known earlier than age 25, I would have changed. In high school, if, I, if they would have had classes called Wealth One, Wealth Two, I'd have taken both classes. I would not have waited until age 25. So the earlier, the better. So what should a child do with a dollar? Here's the simple premise to begin with. Don't spend it all. And if a child wants to spend the whole dollar, you got to say, hey, don't spend it all, you know, don't spend it all. They'll say, why not? It's my dollar. I earned it. You say, I know you earned it, but don't spend it all. They'll still say, why not? Say, let me show you why not. So you put them in your car, take them to the other side of town, and show them where people live that spend the whole dollar. You just drive them around. Kids learn best by visual. Just drive around and say, would you like to live here? Kid says, no. Would you like to live like these people live? Kid says, no, no. Then you can't spend the whole dollar. So, kids will get the message. So, you know, take them to the other side of town, show them around, unless you already live there, and then just show them around. Anyway, don't spend the whole dollar. Now, let me give you my best view of what to do with a dollar. And I promise you, if you started at age 15, now if you're over 15, right, you've still got plenty of time. You've still got 20 years. You know, if you're 30, you've still got 20 years. I mean, you know, you've still got plenty of time to start what I'm about to share with you. What to do with a dollar. Here's my first bit of advice. Never spend more than 70 cents. Never spend more than 70 cents. Now you gotta pick some number and the number you pick is gonna be determined by your philosophy. It's gonna be determined by what you've been taught or your experience teaching yourself. When I first met my teacher, Mr. Shof, I was at about 110% of each dollar. You know, I'm down at budget finance, hawking my furniture and my car one more time. And then I learned a whole better formula for financial independence. Number one, don't spend more than 70 cents. Now, kids say to me, well, okay, what do I do with the other 30 cents? And here's what I teach them. 10 cents for charity. Charity or church or helping people that can't help themselves. 10 cents to support worthy projects, projects that you feel good about, 10 cents out of every dollar. It's called being generous with part of what you've taken out of society. Now, in my opinion, nothing teaches us character better than generosity. No class, no teacher, no book teaches, generos teaches character better than generosity. And the best time to start is when the amounts are small and I know if kids learn these lessons well, they'll give a dime out of a dollar, help people that can't help themselves, support worthy projects. Or if you belong to a church, they teach tithe, peace of. That's very important. Now, because when the amounts get larger, sometimes it's a little more difficult. You know, giving 100,000 out of a million, someone says, oh, if I had a million, I'd give 100,000. I'm not sure, that's a lot of money. So the time to start is when the amounts are small, 10 cents out of the dollar. Okay, next 10 cents, I call active capital. 
Active capital means do something to make a profit. Active capital. Set aside a portion of your income. Wages are okay, but I'm telling you, wages will make you a living. Profits will make you a fortune. So set aside part of your income as capital called active capital. Any kind of project you can possibly think of, you can possibly come up with. I'm going to write a new book, I think, for kids. I think the title is going to be, of course, Kids Should Pay Taxes. It's kind of an interesting title. In California, kids do pay taxes. When a child walks into 7-Eleven, buys something that costs a dollar, the proprietor says, give me seven more pennies. And the child says, hey, what's these seven pennies for? And the proprietor says, that's the taxes. The kid says, well, hey, I'm only eight years old. The proprietor says, congratulations, you're my youngest taxpayer. Give me the money. So in California, where I live, kids do pay taxes. The big question is, should they? And my book will answer that question. Of course, kids should pay taxes. Nothing is for free. If you want to ride your bicycle on the sidewalk instead of in the mud, you got to pay the seven pennies. Nothing is free, so we all have to pay. So, 10 cents out of your living, out of the money you earn, set aside for capital. Capital to try your best to show a profit. And in my book, it's going to be all kinds of ways kids can make money, right? Two bicycles, one to ride and one to rent. I mean, you know, it doesn't take long to figure out some enterprise that'll start making a profit. Then you must jot this down if you're taking notes, profits are better than wages. One, you can't usually start wages until you're about 16, 15, 16, but you can make a profit long before you're eligible to start earning wages. And then there's no limit to profits and they can, they can double and triple and quadruple. You know, there's no limit. It's incredible how fast profits can grow. So profits are better than wages. Wages make you a living, profits make you a fortune. Now, the third 10 cents is vitally important. I call it passive capital. Capital you let somebody else use. A financial institution, stocks and bonds, mutual funds, whatever. Let someone else use it, you furnish the money, they use it to make a profit, but they pay you for the use of it called interest. And here's one of the things that'll make you financially independent fairly quickly, and that's called compound interest. And this is how you get it. Letting someone else use a portion of your money, your substance. They show the profit, they pay you interest. And this passive capital, I'm telling you, over a sustained period of time, if you'll develop this little 10, 10, 10, and 70, especially starting at age 15, I'm telling you, by the time you're 35, you will be financially independent. You'll have the ability to live from the income of your own resources. And then one more point on passive capital. There's a Bible philosophy. I'm an amateur on the Bible. But there's a Bible philosophy that teaches the borrower is servant to the lender. And if you want to be in a powerful position as you grow older, Finally, when you become mature, maybe have your own business, things have worked out for you for the future. The position you always want to be in is the power position, and that's called the lender. The lender is the power position. So if kids learn early enough, and then you ask them what they'd like to be when they grow up, I'm telling you, once they understand, they'll say, well, one of the things I want to be is one of those lenders. That's the power position, not the spender. No, you'll be pitied the rest of your life if you just become a spender got to become a lender and I think this is the one formulas to follow 10 cents out of every dollar let someone else use it be the lender power position then try to show a profit can't we teach our children how to take a dollar search the neighborhood find a broken wagon pay a dollar for it bring it home you know clean it up sand it until it's clean paint it red till it shines straighten out the wheels till they're true take it back to the neighborhood sell it for five dollars Anybody can do that.